I'm just gonna come out and say it. I can't live without generative AI. Do I need it like I need running water? No, I do not. But do I need it like a camera needs autofocus? Like a sprinkler system needs a timer? Like a house needs a Roomba? Yes, I do. I'll start things off with a new feature that's currently only inside Photoshop beta that allows you to remove low focus people from the background. As in the case of this photograph from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description. And so the first thing I'm going to do is switch to the remove tool right here. And then I don't want to hurt the original image. So I'll create a new layer and I'll just call it AI maybe because I'm not sure whether it's going to use AI or not. Notice this mode right here is set to never use generative AI. Let's start there. Why don't we? That way the tool is going to take advantage of pattern recognition and I'll turn on sample all layers so Photoshop can see the composite image and I'll click find people in background which works pretty quickly by the way and pretty accurately in my experience as well. Notice it does identify those people for deletion and now all you have to do is press the enter key in order to make them go away. It happens very quickly when you're not using AI but it doesn't necessarily happen very accurately. So notice in this case it's kind of a mess. It's not AI maybe. I'm going to say no AI because that's what it were. And now I'm going to turn it off and I'll create a new layer and I'll call this one AI for sure. And then we'll do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and click find people in background. Notice I haven't changed the other setting yet because it doesn't come into play. The discovery process works the same either way. And now I'll switch to, you can switch to may use generative AI if you want to. That's not going to help for us discovering what's going on. I'll say always use generative AI and then press the enter key. And you'll know if it's using AI, by the way, Regardless of the setting up here, if it's set to maybe it's going to use it, you'll know it's happening because you'll need a live internet connection so Photoshop can communicate with Firefly online and it's going to take a lot longer as well. You may even see the progress bar hanging as in my case, which is definitely irritating, but ultimately things will go away. Now in our case, it didn't really happen seamlessly. It's not as bad as this, of course, but we still have some sticks left in the background as if there's some mysterious plant that has died. And so this is before and this is after. And so I'll tell you what, my preferred way of dealing with something like this, if it doesn't work, is to switch to the spot, uh, the selection brush, that is, which I really like. I think it's a great tool. I know not everybody agrees with me on that point. Some people figure why not just work inside the quick mask mode for the simple reason that I didn't have to. And now I'm going to click generative fill. I'm not going to enter a prompt and I'll just let her rip. And the reason this is going to work better, by the way, I'll just preview the fact that it is, is because I have a bigger margin around the selection, which is not something that you can accommodate currently with the remove tool. And we do have three different variations also, which is helpful. So if you don't like the first one, which I kind of do, then I could go with the second one, which I also like. And the third one, which looks great as well. So great that I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe. Now, another highly practical use for generative AI is in the retouching process. I'm sure you already know a lot about this. I am going to be passing along some fresh information. And so this is a photograph I shot of a recent fire zone. Always scary, but this one got to be about three acres before they contained it. So that's absolutely awesome, of course. Notice that they use some Foscheck, that red stuff that they drop by airplane or helicopter in our case. In any event, I want to retouch it away. So I'll create a new layer and I'll call it Retouch. And then I'll grab my Remove tool, always popular. And notice that the mode is set to always use generative AI still because I said it that way. And now just paint over this region. And because as by default, the remove after each stroke checkbox is turned on, it is going to apply immediately. So Photoshop gets to work communicating with Firefly. That's why it is taking a moment or two and you do need that live internet connection. Now it's pretty sluggish as things stand right now and that is because after all, it's still in beta. But it when it gets done, it does an absolutely great job. Notice that it added vegetation, if anything, but we only have the one variation. So unlike the equivalent tool inside Camera Raw and Lightroom, you can't switch 
switch between different variations. Let's say you want to, then I'll turn off that retouch layer. I won't get rid of it. I'll just go ahead and switch to a different tool. My beloved selection brush. I just like to brush in the selection in real time without having to switch to the quick pass mode. And as long as I'm doing this, by the way, you could just use the lasso tool in other words, but as, as long as I'm doing this, might as well paint away this dead tree. And if memory serves, there's some power lines in the background. I love power lines because I like electricity, but I don't want them in my photograph. Now I'm going to click generative fill and then click generate. Do you see what I'm doing wrong? I'm being greedy. I'm trying to paint too much at a time. If the region that encompasses, so imagine a rectangular bounding box is encompassing all this pinkness right here. If it's bigger than a megapixel, then you're gonna get low res results. And to show you what I mean, I'll just go ahead and zoom in on this tree right here. Notice this guy. That is an original tree in my photograph, whereas these trees right here are new trees that got added and they're gummy by comparison, they're low res. And that's because I tried to do too much work at a time. And so what I would do, if that were a problem, which it is, of course, I would go back and repaint each one of those brush strokes independently. However, notice that I have three different variations, all of which look pretty darn great and I have a new layer. So I haven't harmed any of the original imagery. Now let's say I want to expand the image. I want to make it wider. In other words, we have a little bit of letterboxing, if you will, on the left and right hand sides. Now I can use the crop tool. That is the simplest way to work. And so notice delete crop pixels is turned off and fill is set to generative expand. That's just generative fill by another name by the way. And now I'm just going to drag the left hand side of the image over a little bit. And so this, this tool works as long as you don't go crazy with it, as long as you don't try to expand in all four directions or even two directions, one direction at a time generally works. And now I'll just press the enter key and send it on its way. So again, it's communicating with Firefly, yada, yada, and it is going to generate new imagery just over here on the left-hand side. So I'm being careful and it looks actually really darn great. Notice that. And that, that one does not look great. The mountains are, are merging with the sky up there, but that one looks okay. Actually, I like the first one the best. And we do have something of a resolution match. It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to match exactly. So these rocks are the original rocks. They look nice and crisp. These are a little mushier. Hey, real quick. These are some great practical applications of generative AI, but want to dive deeper? Want to look at how Photoshop can actually refine and enhance AI artwork produced by Midjourney and Dolly? Then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash But let's say you want more control. I'm not saying anything I've done so far is wrong. It's all good in fact, but I am going to undo those operations there. So I end up with that letterboxing again, and I'm just gonna show you the careful person's way of working. If you wanna take a little bit more time. First of all, you don't want a flat background, and so I'll convert it to an independent layer, and then you wanna go up to the image menu and choose the canvas size command. And the advantage here is you've got the numbers right in front of you. So notice I've got the relative checkbox turned on, and let's say I wanna add four 400 pixels to the left. So I'll anchor down the right hand side of the image. All that counts now is that I do the math. You want to whip out your phone, the calculator, and do the math. And the math is 2600 pixels, that is the height, because it's not going to change by the 400 pixels that you're adding. If you do that math, that's 1,040,000 pixels, which is actually less than a megapixel, and that's because a megapixel, strictly speaking, is 1,024 by 1,024 pixels, which is 1,048,000 pixels. So we're 8,000 pixels under a megapixel, which is a good place to be. And now I'll grab my rectangular marquee tool and select a little more. So just make sure that you don't select way too much because if you select that much, it defeats the purpose, but you do want some overlap. And then you want to click generative fill and let it rip. Once again, I'm doing the exact same thing I did with generative expand combined with the crop tool. I'm just taking more steps to do it, but those steps are valuable because they allowed me to make sure that I'm not exceeding 
exceeding the viable resolution. Now, this is a, a good resolution match, as you can see right here. But what this stuff is, I don't know. So I'll switch to a different variation. That's a little bit too much slope on the mountain over there. That's better. I like that. And then I could also brush away this stuff in here if I wanted to. But I'm actually pretty satisfied with the result. You might be as well. This is before, by the way. And this is after. All right, so far so good. I think all of this qualifies as ethical use of generative AI. Where we might come to loggerheads is when using AI in the creation of actual designs. And for example, this is a header graphic for one of my newsletters. My weekly newsletters are free, by the way. You can subscribe if you like at deek.com. This was for the week in which I featured my first video on Affinity Photo. And so I wanted it to be really good and I created it inside affinity photo so i think this is all ethical now most of the elements are drawn just the background this part here was created with ai now you may say well you should have drawn it you should have drawn it by hand no i should not have this is a header graphic i want it to be insanely cool but i don't want to spend the rest of my life on this part of it now you may know this wonderful trick for creating exploding purple alien energy coming out of the ocean. I know one too, use AI. Now there is no AI inside Affinity Suite, inside any of the Affinity products right now. That may change in the future. So I use Dolly and a chat GPT in other words. And so I'm gonna double click on the thumbnail for this thing. So you can see it, this is the real thing. Uh, you know, as real as it gets. In other words, I tried out the prompt. This is the prompt many times and eventually came up with this. It's basically a burst of purple alien energy. Coming out of the waters, well, I didn't ask for water, but it came up with this and I think that's really cool. I don't think this is cool. Notice if I switch back to the main composition, I now see the text because it auto updated. That's nuts, Affinity, don't do that. Anyway. Still very cool. And at the end of the day, I come up with a nice header graphic. Now I know a lot of folks will say, got two problems with AI. One, that it is built on image scraping. And so it wouldn't even be possible if there weren't many images that were posted in good faith by actual creative professional human beings in the past. And now these corporations have gone and taken our work from us. Well, it's not that simple. We could have a larger argument about that. But the other one that I really gravitate toward is I, I like to draw. I don't want something creating this stuff for me. I like to draw too. I draw all the time. I drew this on the iPad from scratch, by the way. Gonna feature it in a future video. So turn on notifications, but sometimes I want an assist. And especially when creating this kind of otherworldly art that I would not personally make. And here's another example, this time in Photoshop and the advantage of working in Photoshop on a week, you know, this is this is actually featuring a week in which I created a video on Photoshop, is that Photoshop offers AI. And so you can actually, you know, gather resources directly from Firefly using this icon right here. It will generate an image from a text prompt. And that way you've got this live layer of AI, generative AI. And I've got 10 variations that I assembled all together. And so I can just switch between them. Why are they all blue when they're not normally blue, by the way? I'll go ahead and twirl this layer open. You can see that I have a color overlay effect right there. So it's colorizing this layer. And just because I wanted that blue aesthetic, don't you know? But I've got all these different variations to choose from. And that just gives me a lot of latitude. And that way I can keep trying things until I get what I want. And... If you think you quite, you haven't quite done it or you still want to push it further or you have, you know, a little bit of time on your hands and you're enjoying playing with the feature, then all you have to do is click generate where that layer is concerned and Photoshop will create still more variations for you that may work out just beautifully. In fact, I, ha I dare say I like this one even better. Insightful, outrageous, comment below. And then subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I cover what. For a deeper dive on AI imaging, join me at patreon.com slash deeknow and then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deek Now.